brings us to item number 18 under discussion of our proposed revisions to board policy IHAM health education shown in exhibit G. I know we have a staffer going to lead us in that. Thank you, Mr. Gant. Chairman Gant, board members, Dr. Hefner, we are continuing our efforts to get ready for the coming academic year 2017-2018, so we have more policies for you to consider this evening for discussion. The first policy that you're going to see in Exhibit G regarding health education, our Comprehensive Health Act has gone through some recent revisions to include <coughs> sexual abuse and assault prevention, domestic violence, violence, and also CPR and AED. So the revisions that you see here tonight on the first page of the two of, for this policy are all to make sure that we are in compliance. Our coordinator, Beth Bolin, has worked very much on this policy revision so that we could bring it forth to you. But in addition to the changes you see, sometimes it's helpful for you to know the context of which what we plan to do. On August the 21st, when we have our District Professional Development Day, Ms. Bolin will bring together the teachers that are involved with this to make sure that we <coughs> offer them the training that they need to be sure that they are ready to implement these changes for the 2017-2018 school year. This certainly will affect our biology teachers at the high school um, to make sure that they are prepared. Our middle school PE teachers will take the lead on this because they teach PE and health. So we're going to make sure that the right people are prepared with this information, and we always make sure that we have the opt-out opportunity for parents who may not feel comfortable for their students to participate with these activities that are now required. So the things that you see as far as revisions are simply to make sure that we are in compliance with the Comprehensive Health Act and to make sure that we have captured what is expected of us in a hopefully an easy way for people to read and understand the changes in which we anticipate for the coming year. So Mr. Gant, that will complete for exhibit um, G, health education. Any questions regarding that? Ms. Hammond? I have one. Um, is it this year that the state law has the video on sexual abuse that is a requirement for uh, kids to see? Uh, the or is it only for teachers to see it this year and share with you? We're not looking to make any changes for this current okay. academic year. We're preparing for the 17-18 school year. We have had some, um, I'll use hiccup, with some content support from the department where we had some things that were posted and then the department decided that maybe the appropriate content wasn't there, so that was taken back. So we've made sure that we have sought out the appropriate resources to support the instruction of which this law expects for our teachers to implement. You know, in explanation, it, it's one of the things that seems to be rampant with middle school children is, you know, helping them realize it's okay to to report it. And so that, I, I just want to be sure our teachers are, um, you know, on top of the latest thing that, that, we, that we can help guide these middle school kids, and any kid, I mean, Absolutely. it can be, you know, elementary, but I, I'm more familiar with the, I thought that there was a, a, a film out that, that they were making a show, and we even talked about was it that appropriate, we as teachers, but that it was going to be a state law, so I, I was interested in seeing if that had, if I misunderstood that it, we okay. have to show that now. Do you to happen to know kids. the video title of what you've heard? We it, can investigate? It, 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 it is a... You know how they have the, the Aaron's Law, where there's a child that's been, this is a young lady who's now an adult, and she uh, brought forth this, she talks about it as a child, a teenager, and what happened to her, and she finally realized by telling someone, and now she's an adult. So, and it may be a, a federal, I'll have to find out, but I wanted okay. to see if we had anything right now in our schools to help kids know you know that, that it real it's very real and it can happen some have to put it more real to them and this was just we were required by our district to mm -hmm. see it mm -hmm. um and then they wanted the kids to see it and um and we did but it may be district to district that's why i wanted to find out if we were doing it i would but love to hear the title of what you find out what that is because of course I have it written resources down. vary and I, i'm fortunate that between the instructional department and dr harris's department with social workers and nurses we try to make sure that we keep our teachers on the forefront to be involved, but we don't take the chances to be the cutting edge first to get out there right. and try things yeah, as no, far as getting to either. I, no, so I I'd be it. curious what that title may be, and we can certainly look, and I'll ask Ms. Bowen to check into that as well for Thank us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bowen. Mr. Keats. It, it sounds like you're describing Stewards of Children, Darkness to Light, which was the training module. We've done that's That's what it faculty. sounds like yes, you're describing. Um, I do have a question on page three. I'm just... Help me with the understanding. We've added the CPR. Mm -hmm. but 
I'm just not clear if that, are they going to require to obtain certification as a student, or is this just an introduction to CPR? It's, um, mm -hmm. it's more of an introduction, and according to what Ms. Boland has been um, shared with by the State Department, it's basically going to boil down to a 30-minute lesson for our students. So there are um, some variances for how school districts are going to implement this from, um, we've heard of one neighboring district that plans to have an outline of, um, of a human body and have some practice on something like that, but it's not someone to be certified to be able to lead this effort. We will work with the American Red Cross to make sure that our teachers are properly trained so that they can lead the information, but we're not trying to make sure that students get the certification to be able to um, conduct CPR training. I was just trying to root out any of these kind of unfunded mandates and, you know, certification would come with a cost both yes, for sir. our faculty and for our students. And I just was trying to get a heads up if we thought that was going to become a budget issue in the next year or two that we've got to account for all the certification costs. And I very much appreciate that. Mrs. Boland, if she were at the podium, would tell you we have been searching for appropriate resources and have used instructional funds um, per the board's um, support of our budget to make sure that our teachers do have the adequate resources and that we can standardize. And uh, we've even gotten to the point with planning to make sure that we collect these materials back from our schools so that they're not left in a closet someplace and possibly be moved during the summer and be lost. So we're going to be very protective of these resources to make sure that we can offer continuations of using these resources as opposed to them being placed or misplaced and then have to be replaced later. But unfunded mandates are part of our world, Mr. Cates. Welcome. <laughs> right. Welcome to the world. You have a question? You want to go over uh, school wellness exhibit H Absolutely. also, please? We are a fortunate <laughs> school district five to have a collaborative professional environment. So we are we celebrate the fact that we work closely within all of our departments, but tonight, with Mr. Richardson's absence, I have the opportunity to introduce um, Mr. Todd Biedmo, our Director of Student Nutrition. Mr. Biedmo is going to bring to you tonight some revisions with our wellness policy, our school wellness. Uh, again, this is a compliance effort that he has worked on with various committees and to make sure that we have looked at this through various lens, obviously through student nutrition, but also through an instructional lens, that we make sure the recommendations that we're bringing forth to you tonight for discussion are certainly in compliance with USDA, but also to make sure that we are looking towards the vision of School District 5. Mr. Beanbow. Thank you, Dr. Melton. Uh, Mr. Gant, school board members, Dr. Hefner. Uh, tonight, we're here to discuss the school wellness policy that's included in your packet. <coughs> um, as you know, all districts participating in the national school lunch and breakfast programs are required to develop a local wellness policy that promotes health of our students and addresses the problem with childhood obesity. The wellness policy for the school district falls under the USDA jurisdiction 7 CFR 210.31C. Our district is fortunate. We have already have a robust wellness policy. Um, so we're fortunate we already have a, a great policy in place. However, we must update the policy to be in compliance with the new USDA regulation requirements. It's very, very simple because we're already doing most of the things. Um, Ms. Boland and I have met several times. We've uh, involved the school nurses. We've had students involved. We've had some physicians. So we met with our District Health Wellness Advisory Committee on April 20th, 2017 to discuss this policy. There was a couple of little changes we made and those changes were included in your policy tonight. So we're just updating to be in compliance with USDA regulations to ensure that we get our federal funding and to, to also help improve what we're doing in our district wellness policy and in our, throughout our whole community. So are there any questions or? Mr. Cates. <clears throat> on uh, page five, and I'm looking at, I guess it's the fourth bullet point there. Uh, first, uh, over uh, general question. This applies to activities held during the school day? Yes, sir. Not to activities no, after school? That's correct. Or athletics? Or not after the 30 minutes, the, the USDA rule is 30 minutes after the school bell rings. There is no jurisdiction from USDA or we don't have to govern that in our policy. I just, I see the sentence, school should not use physical activity, running laps, push-ups as a form of punishment. I certainly support that. 
But I also have been in my share of PE classes mm -hmm. where that is a common occurrence. And I ask, if I ask my two boys, they would probably tell me that's not just for old guys like me that remember that, but they have experienced that as well. How do we differentiate when that's a normal course of activity for a class, if someone is in a physical education class or a weight training class and they're asked to do extra whatever they're doing at the time because of effort or attention or, I mean, in the long run, that could be construed as punishment. Right, yes, sir, and I'll take that in if you don't mind since it's kind of like a three-way <laughs> here between us and Dr. Harris, and Dr. Harris Thank may you. choose to weigh in. We actually have school district policy that prevents a student from having to uh, from walking laps as a consequence right. or from running laps or other kinds of punitive physical measures. Um, obviously, if you're taking a, a physical education class and trying to get the form right, you may need to do extra sets. You may need to do more reps to make sure that you have the correct form. But in no way should anything that happens in our PE classes nor in our regular classrooms be used as a punitive measure of consequences to apply some sort of a physical response. Dr. Harris, anything you want to add? Then one other place, and I'm trying to find my note, but it mentioned uh, concession stands. And I guess they're, again, we're just confined to the school day, which I don't know that we would operate concession stands during the school day as much, but it does reference what can be uh, served in the concession stand as well on page eight. Yeah, it, it, if it was during the school day, it would have jurisdiction. But again, concession stand after the school day, we have no jurisdiction with this policy. Mr. Cates, if I may add there, um, when I worked, as Dr. Heffer says, in another life or in a previous life, there are some school districts that do have concessions available during class changes and breaks um, <clears throat> that are used for um, profit for pupil activity for selling things to make sure in school district five we do not have that the snack machines or the vending machines that we have are not in competition with our school lunch nor breakfast program but are there for students who may have missed breakfast or may choose not to participate with lunch so they are available during certain times during the day but not in competition as a concession stand in this school district Ms. Hammond Mine is a sort of a follow-up with, um, and I think I understood you right, if it's 30 minutes after, let's say it's um, they play baseball or they play basketball, whatever, and it's an after-school coaching situation, and a coach tell, a teacher tells the coach that little Johnny didn't, didn't behave well in class today, mm -hmm. and they can make them run laps at practice because that's after school. With this policy... Be, would that be breaking this policy? That, let me. Go on, no. You, I, <laughs> Sorry. We've got to get our visual cues down. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Did you follow what? You got, you got the situation I'm asking. That's yeah. more between Dr. Harris and me. That would not be in regards to this policy. Okay. That is more separate with our discipline policy that prevents teachers from having that physical punitive measure. I got you. So even though it's coaching and it's after school, you can't do that. I would say we would probably need to review that policy to make sure, but um, those have, who have been athletes, I know Mr. Haltwanger has a, an interest that's in baseball. A, that's, um, a that's, that's a normal thing. That's normal. That's very that normal. Be that <laughs> Y'all, it works It may for seem teachers. like punishment, right. but it's normal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> those kids do not want me to talk to the coach. But it certainly just, is motivational. It's motivational. But I yeah, will it's, say it's not been reported to either one of us as being a problem okay. in school district five. Okay, I, it, it's not. In, and then my other one is, is another subject. But I would like you for, I guess it's on page six at the top, only foods and beverages that meet smart snacks and school nutrition standards can be marketed and advertised on school property. Can you define smart snacks for me? It, it's, it's complicated. Uh, it has... It, it's based on the sugar content of food, the sodium, and all that. At the next board meeting, I can bring that to you. It's based on the calorie contents and the size of each item, so it's really not a one-size-fits-all, but I can bring that to the next board meeting. It's in a calculator that's available. That, that I got you. Yes, ma'am. I mean, there's a, a distinct definition of the smart snack. Yes, ma'am, and that's, that's part of the, US, the USDA regulation for and smart And that's snacks. even in... Um, I mean, I know this, this is separate from school lunches, if I'm reading this right. This is like something that would, say, be in a vending machine. 
Yes, we if, if a school had one. Yes, do most of ours have a vending machine? Do we know, do, you know, or does it vary from school to school? If we have vending machines that operate during the school day, they're in smart snack compliance. We do, we do have some vending machines at, at Spring Hill here at Chapin. We actually have vending machines, but Secondary all the items in those vending machines meet, the, they already meet smart snack compliance. So we're already ahead of the game, actually, but, but we are in compliance with that right now with our vending machines. And it doesn't count for teachers' teachers' workroom. They can have unsmart. Yeah. <laughs> Unfo yeah. Well, fortunately or unfortunately, yes, ma'am. That that we don't govern that. I so. got, uh, yeah, just just checking for my <laughs> teachers. Um, but anyway, th those were my two. And then my only other one is, um, if we have children that cannot pay, you know, cannot pay, how, I'd like to hear as a board member how we handle that. Because I know there's been some things in the news about that. Sometimes you can hold, you know, different school. You don't embarrass children. I know we don't do that. But what is our policy? Can they carry that uh, fee for lunches all the way to their senior year, and then, you know, they can't get their diploma or something? I mean, do we have a punitive? Our, our policy is that we provide meals, breakfast, and lunch to any student in the district. We do not give them an alternative meal. We actually give them our published meal. And what, what happens is so they have no lunch money. They, if, they, if they run up debts of $500, right. we still provide them a quality meal. So that's our policy. That's Thank an administrative you. rule policy. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any other question regarding these discussion items? I know they're coming back. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. That brings us to item number 20, which is uh, to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. Ms. Bumgardner. I move that we adjourn. Mr. White seconds. All those in favor, please raise your hand. And we are adjourned. Thank you all for coming tonight and participating.